Yeah, just do your thing. Ayo, welcome to another day, another SAT solved live. Today we're going to be, do <laughs> I should do like enunciation drills before I do my uh, stream, man. This is a <laughs> like, uh, I listened to my own voice recently. Uh, and guys, living in Korea for 10 years has done a number on my, on my enunciation. It's, it's like a little unnatural. So I, I, I got to practice my American enunciation. Anyway, getting back to the point, getting back to the point. Today, we're going to be getting right into the SAT practice test number nine. This is actually the October 2017 administration of the SAT. So it's, it is a real SAT. It came out uh, as a real test, and it was released in the Blue Book. So we'll be going over SAT practice test nine, uh, specifically the reading section. Now, I am feeling a lot better compared to like the last two days, um, you know, uh, the whole thing with Discord <sighs> upset me quite a bit, but I'm over it. I mean, I'm not over it, over it. I'm going to still bother them uh, because I think it's not right what they did. It's not fair what they did. So I'm going to keep working on that. But, you know, life goes on. Got to work with what I have, which is sometimes I don't have that much because a, a a major tech company decides that customer support is not worth investing any money in, and so treating customers, <laughs> treating somebody who brings hundreds, who brings hundreds of new users to Discord per year, is uh, not worth it. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, whatever. Discord, sure, sure. You're comfortable now. You're comfortable now. Let's see how you feel when, I, when I'm bringing tens of thousands of people to some other platform, dudes. Okay, well, not yet. Anyway, I'm not salty. Maybe I'm a little salty. I'm a little salty. I'm a little salty. Well, <laughs> this is all besides the point. I'm about to get into the SAT practice test number nine. And uh, I want to keep it snappy. I want to keep it going uh, just because I have other plans later tonight. More classes, more things to get through. So let's get right into it. I need to... Oh. I did something dumb. I didn't bring my phone with me. Everybody, give me a second. I'm going to bring my phone here so that I can have my stopwatch with me. Where'd my phone go? One sec. All right, so that is uh, that's my phone. Guided access, so now my screen is not gonna unlock or not gonna what do you call it? It's not gonna go black. It's not gonna go dark. It's not gonna lock. Yeah, lock. Lock is the word. Uh, learning English here. English. Learning English here. Okay, my uh, <laughs> my enunciation. I'm I'm getting self conscious about it, guys. Uh, I'm like, I'm so insecure. Okay, let's get into it. Boom. Nine. Oops. Page nine. Is there a cleaner way of doing this? Practice test nine. SAT solve live PT nine. That's kind of ugly, right? You know what? I'm just gonna do practice test nine. Practice. Test nine. All right. Reading. Cool. And uh, what am I doing over here? Oh, the chat, the chat, the chat, the chat, the chat. By the way, I uh, bought a new mic. I don't know if you guys can tell, uh, but 
the sound of my voice should be more mellifluous. <laughs> it should be because I paid money for this. Uh, let me know if you guys like my new mic. I'm just updating the chat widget so that anyone who wants to chat, um, anything that happens, and that anything that happens in the chat will be visible for future uh, viewers. Makes it a le little easier to to track what's happening. So I just added it right now. Now I'm about to get ready to murder this test. I'm gonna get a 52 out of 52, guys. Okay, three days in a row. Let's make it happen. Three days in a row, let's make it happen. <sighs> By the way, I am a mic noob, so I, you might notice that I like, you know, like do this where I like leave away, like I'll, I'll, I'll go far away from the mic. Um, yes, please chastise me, please embarrass me, please, please, uh, please yell at me. Okay, I, I want to get better at these things. You know, and it's going to take some time to build up these habits that I don't have, but I think it's good. It's, I want to deliver solid audio quality <laughs> to everyone that watches. So, you know, if, I, if I'm sucking at mic control or, or whatever you call it, uh, if I'm sucking at being a good, at, at, at being a streamer, uh, just, you know, call me out on it. All right. All right. I'm about to get started now. Here we go. First passage, three, two, one. Give me a sec. Do I need to announce anything else? Hey guys, join the Discord server. We're lovely people. And I assume you are a lovely person as well. And you are not some sort of mole rat that's going to report random things to Discord that are not my fault <laughs> and try to get my server banned. Join the Discord. We welcome everybody. Including mole rats. Sure, whatever. Here we go. Three, two, one, let's go. Amy Tan, Bone Setter's daughter, Old Little Lao, haggling, haggling, haggling. We stepped inside Father's shop. We're in the shop. North facing. Dim. Because the sun doesn't come north facing. Perhaps this is why he did not, he did not see us. Okay? Father did not see us. Okay, we have all these characters. He was busy with a customer, a distinguished looking, he looks like a scholar. The two men were bent over a glass case discussing the different qualities of ink sticks, okay. Um, are we in China? Oh, okay, a big uncle welcomed us, invited us. He was being formal. I knew he did not, did not recognize who we were. He laughed. Okay, the family's all here. In the shop, who applies many times for not rushing over sooner. They rushed us to be seated at one or one of two tea tables for customers. Old Widow Lao was done haggling. Oh, I see. We were together. Okay. Refused three times. Weak efforts to leave. Three times. So she's being formulaic about this. On the fourth, we finally sat. She's being uh, polite. Okay. But these are... Who are these people? Okay. We're at 140. Try to notice everything. Why would we try to notice everything? Gao Ling. There are so many characters! Her envy? Why would she be envious? The floors were of dark wood, polished, clean, no dirty. Okay, it's a clean place. It's clean, dark wood, clean. It's kind of modern, I guess. Shiny, silk wrapped. They look nicer than in the ink making studio. Okay, he used the the dad used to make ink? The boxes? What are these? What? Okay, our hard work. What, what are these boxes? I am so overwhelmed right now. 
your writing will flow. He's talking about a stick, okay, an ink stick, whatever the hell an ink stick is, the top ship like a ferry boat. A boat, a bird, soar. Ink cakes? What the hell is an ink cake? But he's talking to a customer. As he said this, precious auntie, who the hell is auntie? Who the hell is auntie? Came back into mind, some other person. How she taught me that everything, even ink, had a purpose, a meaning. Okay, that sounds kind of meaningful. Good ink cannot be quick. You can't be an artist if you're without effort. That's a problem of modern ink. I see, modern, modernity versus tradition. Modernity has no thought. You simply write, and nothing but pond scum, dead leaves, mosquito spawn. But when you push an ink stick along an ink stone, you cleanse, you push. What am I? Okay. The effort makes it worth it. It makes it true art. It purifies it, it refines it. I remembered this. Okay, more important than, pre okay. The right hue. He's selling like these high quality pens. A sound, a, like a bell. The tone tells you that the soot is fine. And the scent. Okay, the, the the hue, the sound, the scent. And everyone of our family's ink. Huh. Five. I'm confused by all these characters, but, but now I know what the focus is. Stop. I forgot that I have to do the map of the passage. And I'm noticing that when I'm taking the test, I actually slouch a little. So I'm going to pull this towards me. Okay, I'm going to pull this towards me. Give me a sec. Getting better at this mic control thing. Okay. Oh, it's weird. It's hard to slouch and also look at this at the same time. But, okay. Um, can I make this happen? Let's make this happen. Okay, I think that works. So, yeah, this is slouchable. Uh, so, uh, what, was I, what was I saying? Uh, map of the passage. Map of the passage. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> what was I trying to say? Map of the passage. Okay. Let me just go right into it. Here's the map of passage one. Okay. I'm gonna mem I'm gonna recall everything from memory from the top left to the bottom left to the top right to the bottom right to the third column top. Okay. Here we go. We have old widow Lau or something like that, okay? And she was haggling with somebody and the narrator, who seems to be a child, uh, goes to father's shop. And at father's shop, there's a bunch of, there's a big uncle and there's a little uncle and there's also father and none of them notice the two at first, okay? Old widow, and narrator are not being noticed. And they kind of like look at each other and then at some point there's a flash of recognition and then they're like, oh my God, sorry. And they invite them to sit. And uh, old widow is like, no, 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 no. Three times she refuses, you know, she weakly pretends that she's gonna go out and blah, blah, blah. Uh, she's gonna leave, you know, you have too many guests, you're too busy, blah, blah. So that's the sort of conventional uh, Asian politeness, okay? Uh, and and we get into, what's it called? Um, they eventually get seated with something with tea. I don't know if there's like tea that's being served, but the father is with a customer and he's, he's describing like ink stuff, ink pens. What, what was it called? Ink something, ink, ink sticks. 
to this customer, okay? So this is the first long paragraph, anyway. There might have been a short paragraph right before, but anyway, it's, like the, it's, the, it's the first column. Starting at the bottom of the first column, they're seated and they're like, um, they're like doing things, okay? Uh, what are they doing? Chatting. What happens in the second column? Oh, at the bottom of the first column, I think there's like this Gao Liang or something like that. This friend, I think. This friend or something of the narrator who's going to be really envious. And so we describe the scene. We describe this father's shop. I think this shop was an upgrade from a previous shop. They moved to a new shop or something like that. Okay. So we get dark wood. Things are shiny. Things are clean. Is that the bottom of the second column? That might be the bottom of the second column, and it goes up to the top of the third column. Then I don't really remember what the second column is about. I, I don't remember it at the moment. Okay, it's just sort of a blank. Maybe just too many characters or something. I was confused. Oh, there's also an auntie at some point. Very overwhelming. At the top of the third column, what we get is um, after all the, oh, this place is really nice comments. What we get is um, a longer conversation between the father and the, this customer. But before that, we have like this flashback of what auntie somebody said. Okay, Auntie says something. Oh, this is actually at the bottom of the second column. Oh, my God. My map is all over the place. But um, auntie at the bottom of the second column says that, you know, ink is like, everything or something ink is like really important for some reason okay i don't remember her exact reasoning but then what father is saying to this customer is even more impressive more important sounding than what auntie said what father is saying is hey talking to his customer hey look at the hue of this thing hear the sound of this thing smell the scent of this thing this is really good stuff and everyone's going to know how good this stuff is when you buy it okay he's selling his wares and the the daughter's proud that his fa her father is um so good at selling the family ink okay and that's how the passage ends that was my map of the passage i would give myself like a B minus or maybe a C plus for the map, um, mainly because I'm forgetting what happens in the second column, mainly because I'm forgetting what happens in the second column, but I do remember the thrust of the story. I don't remember all the characters per se, but I know kind of like what the focus of the story is, okay? It's about modernity versus tradition and the value of, oh, and that's what the auntie was talking about. I actually completely forgot about that. That actually happens in the second column. But yeah, um, it's talking about those. And so we're, 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 we're representing pride in the tradition, okay, in a conservative tradition. So that seems to be the focus of the story. And that's my map of the passage. How was your map compared to mine? I'm about to get started on the questions. Here we go. I'm at 5.05. Oh, okay, I'm at 5.05. Let's go. Three, two, one. Let's go. summarizes the passage uh, arrival at the family's ink shops fond memories of the aunt nope surprise visit leads to a happy reunion it's not quite the reunion that's the focus understands comes to understand her father's ambitions uh, sure okay there we go appreciation 535 main theme uh, you know just Pride and family quality is achieved to F deliberate effort, hard work with material expressed needs to be expressed concretely. Relationship be okay, deliberate effort. This is five fifty five. This is the bottom of the second column. Deliberate effort. Deliberate effort. Okay. So that's the bottom right. Six 10. I had to double check. The port the narrator is portrayed as someone who is uh, just paying attention, I guess. I don't know. Attuned to her immediate... Oh, that's interesting. That's basically the correct answer. Sympathetic to the needs. No. Anxious. No. 
reserved about or nope yeah 6 30 okay inferred that her reluctance to stay for tea is from politeness um this is a little yeah i mean it's right that's right inconsiderate no 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 okay 6 45 politeness a best evidence okay where do we get the feigning okay where we do we get the feigning bottom left or top right nope no it's over here uh 15 through 18 15 through 18. oops where are we 15 through 18 that's 7 10. Uh, contrast between the studio at the the ink making studio and the shop is that the shop is cleaner and uh, yeah basically ink making studio oh the family has a studio yeah the boxes make them so much nicer looking impressive yeah that works that works 740 good artistic philosophy expressed by auntie you should always suffer right oh my god what's wrong with miss this why does it keep yeah doing that okay uh expressed in the fourth paragraph it is reasonable to infer a hastily written to be good bad it's bad worthless 805 here we go best evidence that's bottom right right and the 54 56 54 55 and then 50 51 or even yeah 54 55 52 to 55 let me just double check 52 to 55 you do not have to think you simply write what is okay there we go that's correct 840 matches most nearly means matches 59 matches most nearly means what is in my heart that matches my mind that corresponds to oh my god <laughs> yeah 855 clean most nearly means clean most nearly means a, a pure uh pure and pure as pure pure as uh a complete skillful distinct let me just double check the sound as distinct and pure yep yeah. yep yep Nine twenty. moving on to second passage here we go second passage let's go feel free to ask questions as i do this how the web affects memory how the web affects memory okay uh, yes this is by the way my very first time ever reading this passage how the web affects memory search engines have changed the way okay i assume that it drops our memory but we actually get to know more or something like that we're changing the way okay changing the way it functions okay way it functions google effects on memory cognitive consequences shows that when people have access to search engines, they remember fewer facts less information that makes sense because they can just use search that duh this is actually pretty obvious man this is a little too obvious no that the internet has become part of a transactive memory source a method which okay i gotta remember this word this is a method apparently it's hypothesized by Ve wegner in 1985 okay Daniel Wegener, we're only talking about Wegener, okay? Transactive memory exists in many forms. Transactive memory, okay? Relying on his, oh, okay, I see. Interesting. A network of memory. Interesting. It's an interesting way of thinking about it. You, have to, you just have to remember who, okay? You don't have to remember what, you just have to remember who. Now, computers and technology are our who. habits cell phones for phone numbers gps for directions facts like actors or capitals we become we become part of the internet 
It's kind of an interesting way of saying that. Uh, sure. Betsy Sparrow and Jenny Liu. There's two of them. Working with them, Wagner conducted four experiments. Hang on, four experiments, four experiments. Um, in the first experiment, in the first experiment, using the computers, excuse me, Oh, I'm sleepy. Using various forms of memory recall to test reliance on computers in the first... What the heck just happened? That just moved awkwardly. Okay. More likely to think of these terms. Okay, wow, I just zoned out. I really just zoned out there. I really zoned out there. In two other experiments, they were asked to type a collection of memories. Type, they were asked to type. They're typing statements. Saved to a computer, erased. Not be saved or best at recalling, which makes sense. In a fourth experiment, typed into a they were giving cues to the wording and asked to name the folders. Name the folders. They could recall the folder locations. Duh. Okay, 1320. Concession, concedes that questions remain. We don't know. We don't know if it affects. It may struggle to employ those facts in critical thinking. The overall is beneficial. <laughs> We're still using our memories to consider where they're located and how to access. Still have to remember. Fourteen, fifteen. Yo, I'm zoned out. Experiment four, memory of statements and folder locations. Remember statements and not folder locations. Remember statement and folder locations. Okay. This is, yeah, that's very, remember nothing, very high. <laughs> Lol. Fourteen, forty. Pause. Okay, I'm about to get into my map of the passage, my map of the passage where I do not look at the passage. I just go straight from memory and I try to recall everything in order from left to right, top to bottom. Here we go. Oh, by the way, how long did I take to read that? Uh, 1440, so I took four, five minutes and 20 seconds and I literally zoned out for like 20 seconds. I was so bad. Uh, I can tell I'm tired. But let's keep going. Memory, brain, computer. Uh, Wagner. Daniel Wagner has been investigating the connection between uh, this idea of transactive memory since like decades ago. I think that's the first paragraph. Uh, next paragraph talks about how in recent times, oh, so back in the day we used to use like, like even like, um, like our wife, right? Ask, our wife would remember a phone number for us, okay? In the second paragraph, though, it talks about more modern forms of transactive memory. You know, cell phones are used for phone numbers. Uh, facts are all through Google, uh, stuff like that. We get a bunch of examples there. And then uh, uh, at the, Okay, that's like the middle of this first column. And then like the bottom of the first column, we start talking about, I think it's a new paragraph. We talk about how Daniel Wagner with like two other uh, researchers 
who were both female and one of them was like Liu and one of them was like Jennifer or something, I forget. Uh, <laughs> uh, but these three people, they did four experiments, okay? Four experiments. That's what it says at the very bottom of the first column. St and then at the top of the right column, what it starts talking about is the first experiment. The first experiment is um, recalling something. They have to recall something. I forget the first experiment, really. The second and third experiments have to do with... Um, this is where I really zoned out, but... Uh, <laughs> dude, my map of the passage is garbage right now. What, what the heck is in the second and third experiments? Half of them were told, oh, computer saving. Um, there's a group where they're told that they have to remember some statements or something, and then uh, half of them are told that you, uh, your statements are going to be saved to a computer, and the other half are told it's going to be erased. And obviously, the people who were told it's going to be erased remember better. I mean, it's just so intuitive that that's true. And then there's the fourth experiment, which I don't remember right now. Okay, I just, it's all sort of blurring in my brain right now, my very mushy brain. Okay, so that's my, those, that, that comes all the way down to the middle of the right column. And then starting at the middle of the right column, it starts talking about how concessions, hey, this might not be all a bad thing. Okay, it's, uh, I don't actually remember all the concessions anymore. Wow, my map is absolute garbage today. Okay, but, there's some concessions and he says that he's overall something 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 but overall he thinks it's a good thing because now we're st we still do need to remember okay we're not just remembering nothing oh oh the concession was something to do with critical thinking you know there's some doubt as to whether this is actually harming our critical thinking or not however he thinks overall it's a good thing because overall like you know we can i guess he doesn't say it directly, but something about like, you know, I guess my assumption is that it's basically we can like remember more things overall since we can use things like Google and whatnot. Plus, it's not like we don't remember anything. We're still remembering things. But now, nowadays, we're remembering more like the where the information is or how to access the information rather than the information itself. And I think that's the final paragraph. And I think there might be one or two more sentences that I don't fully remember. Whew, that was my map of the passage. I would give myself like a C minus or a D plus for that. That was pretty bad. It's a pretty bad map of the passage. Uh, I would still give myself C minus or at least a C because at least I remembered all the trans transitions. My transitions were at least all there. The content was not there, but I at least know, you know, it moved from here to there to there to there. You know, I could at least say all of that. Uh, and I even remember mostly the locations of the transitions as well. So that's actually not terrible. I'll give myself a C. Okay, I was being overly harsh. I'll give myself a C for that map. How well was? How well did you do on your map compared to mine? Let me know in the comments below. Now let's go right into it. Here are the questions. Okay, I'm pulling out my Apple Pencil. Let's get going. 1440. Here we go. Three, two, one. Let's go. The main purpose of the passage is to oop, whoa 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 whoa. The main purpose of the passage is to uh, talk about uh, transactive memory. Lots of ex experiments uh, interferes with nope uh, overly nope uh, nope uh, a study nope examine the effect of a computer use on memory. It this uh is the problem, but everything else is right. Oh uh, my god, this uh is the problem. Isn't that a huge problem? Let me just double check. Is it, can we say that this is a study? And that the four experiments, I guess that could, that could be one study, four experiments, one study. Four experiments, one study. Yeah, we're good with that. Uh, that's 525 now. I took 15 additional seconds. Here we go. Uh, which choice best supports the idea that reliance on computers does not necessarily diminish memory? That's over here in the, in the middle of the right side. Okay, uh, over here, con uh, we still remember. We still remember, where are, where are we? We still have to remember things. That's 75 to 77, here we go. 72 to 75, that's awkward. 72 to 75. Nope, no, no, 72 to 75 also works. All right, that's 1550. Yes, I'm not gonna even double check ABC because I'm so confident in that one. How many, how many minutes was that? That was, uh, that was uh, one minute and 30 seconds for those two questions. Oh my goodness, this is so slow. Okay, in context, the reference to remembering relative's birthday 
the reference to remembering a relative's birthday is the wife, I think. We're talking about transactive memory, but let me just double check. Where's the wife? Where's the wife? Yep, transactive memory. Uh, serves to give an ex illustration of what transactive memory is. Um, nope, nope. Uh, initially developed external sources. Correct. External is the same as transactive in the... Oh! No! Initially is the problem. Initially makes it sound historical. Illustrating the concept using a familiar situation, that's correct. 1640. Yeah, initially is wrong. Okay, 14, based on the information in the passage, which the following would be considered a transactive memory source. When you're using an external source, a written list could work. No locating, hang on. No, no, no. Because this has to be memory. Yeah, these are, none of these are memory. Hmm. A souvenir from a trip. Why would a souvenir, it's not a memory of, it brings up evocative memories. That's interesting. That's an interesting answer choice. But the kind of memory we're talking about is like factual information memory. Uh, so that's kind of why I chose B. Well, that was interesting. It was interesting. I don't think I need to double check that. I don't really need to double check that, but I'm just going to come back to it just for fun. Funsies. Uh, line 26, uh, extensions of. It's 26 extensions of. Where are we? 26 extensions of. They are becoming virtual extensions of. Uh, additions to, sure. Additions works. Developments of? No. Uh, no, additions to. Okay, they are part of us. Okay, that took me 30, 30 seconds? Did that really take me 30 seconds? Or did I just like linger on the previous one? The discussion of the experiment suggests that people are inclined to think of specific information sources in response to being specific sources. Hang on. The discussion of the experiment suggests that people are inclined to think of specific inf information sources, there we go, in response to being challenged to remember it that will then be made inaccessible no it's the opposite of that directed the develop system for maybe be as to provide facts that are not already that's no we're talking about memorization terms hang on maybe that one because that's the first one let me just double check that's the first experiment Participants demonstrate they're more likely to think of Yahoo after being asked a set of difficult trivia questions. Let me just write. That was an interesting experiment. Oh, specific information sources. This is Google and Yahoo in response to being. That's actually C. That's the specific information sources are Yahoo and Google. Okay. Terms related to, yeah, that's, that's incorrect. Develop a system. They were never asked to develop a system in any of the ex experiments. Ooh, that took me a while. How long did it take me? That took me uh, two minutes. Ooh, that's a long one. Okay. Um, top right. Uh, it's over here. Uh, 42 to 45. 42, 45. There we go. Uh, 2005. 15 seconds. Employed. 67 employ. 67 employ. Uh, they struggle to use those facts. Utilize. You Utilize. Perfect. 20, 20. That was actually 12 seconds. But graph, uh, approximately what percentage remembered both parts? Both parts. Very small percentage remembered both parts. That is 17, 18%. 17, 18%. Okay, that's 20, 35. Okay, that was 15 seconds. Based on the description of Wegener's fourth experiment. Fourth experiment was the most likely explanation. Most likely explanation for the findings of the largest single group in the graph. Largest is they don't remember at all. Okay. What's most likely explanation for the findings for the largest group when they don't remember anything at all? Fourth passage, given cues. Okay. So they were 
you're told you're going to be saved, then they were going to be asked to recall. And then there. And then questions remain. How about this? Did not. Yeah, exactly. There's not enough. Wow, Trixie. Hey, we don't know the cause. That's exactly what I should have predicted that. I should have said something about that. Uh, here we go. Next question. Next passage, I mean. Here we go. A female guppy. Whew. Zuck. Paleo fantasy. Paleo fantasy. Evolution tells about sex, diet, and how we live. What? What the hell? What's that even mean? <laughs> a guppy can be sexually mature at two months of age and have it for just a month later. Okay, three months. Unstinting rate of reproduction makes up these. Okay, they're suited. Okay, I see. The rate of evolution. We're focusing on the rate of evolution. David Resnick. Okay, David Resnick has been doing that for the last few decades. Long time. Long time. Guppies, that's colorful, but they have a life in the real world inhabiting streams and rivers, places like Trinidad. Okay, they have a life. Uh, and he's done his field work there. Okay, guppies have different kinds of conditions. Conditions. Mortality rate is higher. Yeah. Kicklets. Yeah. Duh. So far, so good. We're at 2310. Uh, has shown that if you bring the fish into the lab and let them breed there, the guppies become sexually mature. The guppies with me, from the sites with many predators become f f mature faster. Okay, why would they mature faster when there's more predators? Oh, because you have to overwhelm. You have to overwhelm them. You have to overwhelm the predators. The litters are larger, but each baby is smaller. Okay, interesting. Faster and larger. Faster and larger. Being able to have sooner and spreading over a lot is good, 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 good. That's exactly what I was thinking. Demonstrate the traits controlled by genes, not by the environment in which they grew up. Controlled by the genes. Huh. What? Not by the environment. That's interesting. Okay, sure. So it's a genetic thing. So that's it's, so it's an evolutionary thing. Okay. Uh, how quickly though could these differences have evolved? How quickly has the evolution? All right. Here's a, a hypothesis. We're about to get to a hypothesis soon. He could treat streams. like test tubes and see what happens with the predators. Oh, cause they, oh, I see. It's because of the genes. So you're gonna watch evolution happen in real life. Experiment, yeah, I didn't know that was a word for that, but that's cool. It's popular, yeah, it's growing popular by the way, cause we can see the outcome within our lifetimes. That's why he's been around working on this for multiple decades because, you know, I mean, evolutionary speed is still like decades is freaking fast in an evolutionary pace, right? Here we get the f actual experiment. Uh, Resnick removed groups of groupies from the predator and lies below the waterfall and released them into previously guppy free streams above the falls. Although small predatory kill fish occurred in these new sites, these fish do not pose anything close to the danger of the sick. So, safer, okay, safer, when they move to, when they move to a safer place, then the scientists waited for nature to do its work. And so what should happen is they should have larger fish and it should take longer. Mature later, yeah. Fewer, bigger fish, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
So that happens in as few as, wow, that is nuts. That's, that's crazy fast. A little over four generations. That is so fast with more time to require for genetic shifts um, in ability to form school. So other things take a lot, but the sexual uh, traits are very fast and responsive. Okay, that's 2635. Mean number of guppy offsprings in high and low environments on north and south. And north and south. Okay, south, north. Okay, high and low. So we got uh, the higher, right, higher means, higher means um, more babies. Higher means smaller but more babies. Higher means smaller but more babies. High predation. What? What the hell is going on here? Mean embryo mass of gumbo offspring high low predation environments. Northern range mountains. North slope, south slope. Oh, mass. Oh, duh. Oh, my God. Mass, 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 mass. Sorry. Of course. Low predation is higher mass. Oh my God, that took me way too much time to figure out. Okay, mass. Okay, this is number and mass. All right, stop. 2740, that took me how many minutes to read? Uh, that took me six minutes to read, six minutes, or uh, specifically five minutes and 55 seconds to read. I'm about to get into my map of the passage. Here we go. Recalling from the beginning, top, uh, from left to right, top to bottom, everything that I recall. Here we go. Oh, I'll zoom somewhere else so that you can, so, so I can prove that I'm not looking at the passage. I'm not looking at the passage. I'm doing it from memory. Here we go. Um, oh, it's kind of overwhelming, honestly. But there's this, there's this guy that's been working on guppies for a long time because guppies reproduce really, really fast. They are like an ideal specimen. I think that's the first paragraph, but I'm getting confused. Honestly, I don't fully remember if that's the first paragraph. My maps have been absolute garbage today, by the way. Anyway, guppies, 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 um, guppies, lots of babies, lots of, they reproduce very quickly, okay? Uh, the second paragraph, I think, talks about, it's, <laughs> my map today is not very good. Um, the second paragraph talks about, uh, the second paragraph talks about how guppies, uh, when they are predated on, right? When they live in pr highly predatory. Oh yeah, that's what it talks about. Um, guppies that live like right under a waterfall, for example, are lucky guppies because all those like cichlids or cichlids or cichlids, okay? They don't really exist there. The reason is because the waters are too turbulent and crazy. Well, those lucky guppies, it turns out, um, no, it's actually the flip side, but there are other guppies who are unlucky who live where the cichlids are in calmer waters, okay? I think that's the whole second paragraph, but the third paragraph goes into detail about the reproduction uh, patterns. The unlucky guppies, the one that live with the cichlids, well, what happens with them is they sexually mature very, very uh, uh, younger when they're smaller. Okay. Also, their babies are smaller and um, they have many more babies compared to the guppies that, are, that live in a more safe environment. So at the bottom of the left column, it talks about how guppies are this amazing opportunity to watch evolution in motion. It, uh, biologists call this experimental evolution. That's in the next, uh, it's in the next column. Holy crap, how many columns were there? Were there two columns or three columns? Guys, I don't freaking remember. I think there were only two columns. I think the first column was on the right side of the previous page, and the second column is on the left side of the second page, right? <laughs> Jesus, I don't remember. <laughs> it's all it's all it's all a garbled mess, but I'm gonna assume I'm I'm right. Okay. So so yeah, on the on the second column, the second column, which is the top of the which is the top left of the second page, it's this amazing opportunity to see evolution in action. Okay, so they go ahead and um, 
Uh, oh, and specifically in this in this country, I forgot what the country was. Um, they have these sort of uh, tributaries where they kind of branch off, and they branch. There's so many branches of these tributaries that actually, you know, you can just transplant these guppies into a totally new environment. They're all like different test tubes or whatever. Okay, so so that's what they did. They uh, they just they put guppies that used to be in a harmful environment into a safe environment, and you know what happened? They in only four generations, in only two and a half years. They made larger babies. They took longer to make these babies, and they made fewer babies. They became just like the previous, uh, the the other fish that were li- already living in safer environments. It happens very, very fast. Okay, so the rate of evolution extremely fast in these guppies. Didn't happen so much for the non-sexual traits, you know, like the was it colors or something whatever whatever it was you know those other traits it didn't really happen that was like the final sentence just like a random qualification that pops in at the very end that's my map of the passage i don't even know what grade to give myself because my memory is so bad (laughs) i don't even remember how many columns there were so i actually want to double check here we go oh i was right there's only two columns (laughs) i was so i should i honestly i I give myself a d Uh, probably that's overly harsh but God, that was not a good map. <laughs> that was such a mess. Anyway, how was my map? Oh, sorry. How was your map of the passage compared to mine? Uh, let me know in the comments below. I'm about to go right into the passage now. Here we go. Three, two, one. Let's go. The first paragraph mainly serves to, uh, what was the first paragraph? The They make them suited. Okay, it's talking about why the guppies are good why a certain species are good perfect 28 how many that was 20 seconds all right in describing living conditions of guppies that a lucky guppy is one that is born in a no in a environment that provides protection from predators exactly that is 28 20 that took me 20 seconds best evidence for this conclusion that the streams used by the team were not free of predators in the real world study, this is the second column. We're not entirely free. Hang on, let's talk about it. Because they talked about they it didn't have cichlids. Although small fi- f- killifish, they didn't. Okay, right. That's 57 through 59. 57 through 59. So that's right here. That's 28, 45. That was 25 seconds. And then tubes. The tubes suggest that the streams are great for experimenting. Suitable. That is perfect. That is 29 that took me 15 seconds uh line 49 popular most nearly means popular most nearly means uh 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 uh, popular experimental evolution is becoming more adopted more widely adopted okay more uh widespread uh I think that works. 29, 20. That took me 20 seconds. Dude, I'm killing it, guys. Uh, which finding, if accurate, would undermine Resnick's findings? Resnick. Huh. That's tough. You move them over. Huh. I don't know. I have to read. The, I have to process eliminate. Um, okay. Guppies examined in other parts of the globe exhibit... At a different rate. Okay, that kind of works. Kind of. The new site released the guppies is inhabited by fish that are found to be as predatory. Yeah, that would that would mess it up a lot. That would mess it up a lot. That would mess it up a lot. Harmful to environments. That's off topic. No, this is consistent. This is consistent. This would mess it up a lot. 3030. It can most reasonably be inferred from the passage that the experiments in Trinidad have shown which of the following about guppies. Um, that they, they evolve very quickly. Oh, some, yeah, for sure. That's 3045. Exactly true. I mean, Trinidad, this is all Trinidad.
best evidence over here is um, uh, 69 through 72. 69 through 72. Okay, 3105. Okay, that took me 35 seconds to answer those two questions. Figure one, guppies living in the south slope, high predation, mean number, south slope, high predation. Figure one, south slope, high predation, 6.5. Mean mass of guppy embryos, mean mass of guppy embryos. Okay, uh, obviously, the higher the predation, the lower the mass. No, slope was not better. The mean mass born in the north slope, no, we're not comparing north and south, but maybe we should. <sighs> Annoying, because that would be so off topic. No, but there, it's actually not. Okay. So, predation level observed in each environment have more of an effect than slope location. Yes, predation had a bigger effect. That seems probably exactly correct, but I just don't want to get confused. Couples born in low predation environment had a mean embryo mass that was less. No, that's the opposite. When you are born in a high predation, it's less. High predation, it's less. Exactly. So, that is 32 35 okay that took me a minute and 30 seconds to get those two questions the data presented in figures one and two best support the conclusion that compared with guppies from high so low predation environments are more likely to have hang on let me not get confused low predation means um fatter bigger and more later okay um fewer and not sooner Fewer and greater, fatter. It's fewer, and for some reason I feel like my brain is not good enough today, but yes, fewer, good, and bigger. Fewer and bigger when you have low predation. Okay? Cool. They, they're messing with you with the word litter, but that's correct. Okay, 33, 40. Survival we don't talk about. And Okay, now we're moving on to... Okay, I'm under 35 minutes for three passages. So I'm, I have some... Uh, I have yoyu in Korean. I have some, I'm, uh, I have some free time. Um, 1838, here we go. Sarah Smith... Okay, anti-slavery convention of American woman. Okay, cool, cool. We're told it's not within the province of woman to discuss the subject of slavery, that it's a political question. So women are not allowed to talk about slavery. This is an interesting combination of two different topics. We are stepping out of our sphere. Okay, politics is not in their sphere. It is not true that it's merely okay oh that's interesting it's not just political it's a question of justice humanity morality and religion which enters deeply into home cons oh okay so we're not okay interesting we don't argue that women are allowed to talk about political things we accept that women are not allowed to talk about political things and we say it's not political Yeah, that's an amazing list. These considerations are all involved. These considerations, which are not political, okay? These are not political considerations, okay? And is a, and is a subject comprehending this of magnitude? Okay. These things help with such and I'll tell you what really says with an upright mind in time. Hmm. So this continues the argument that it is not political and women are allowed. Okay. 
to discuss this. By the Constitution of the United States, we're at 36 minutes. Okay, Constitution. The whole physical power of the North is pledged for the suppression of domestic institutes, insurrections. Oh, I see. The problem is that the North is actually supposed to perpetuate. Yeah, the the North is supposed to put down the slaves, and when the father has been shot, left on unholy warfare to become okay to fall themselves. Are we supposed to have no interest? Okay, intense. So we were talking about the sphere of women, but now we're talking about like potential war. This is a very conservative argument for uh, women's participation in this political question. Oh, but now we're getting a little more radical. Let's say that it is political. Well, are we not allowed? Are we only allowed to talk about family? There we go. There we go. No, the events have cast their dark shadows before, overclouding the bright prospects of the future and shrouding the destinies of our country in more than a midnight gloom. We cannot remain inactive. Our country is as dear to us. Wow, now we're thundering here. Uh, dear to us, as to our proudest statements, the more closely. Lots of rhetorical questions, and finally she answers. The more fervent our aspirations that every now and Every inhabitant of our land must be protected in its fireside enjoyments by just and equal laws. That the foot of the tyrant may no longer invade the domestic sanctuary, nor by his hand tear asunder those whom God himself has united by his most holy ties. Let our course then still be onward. 38, 50. Let's stop. All right. Here we go. Here's my map of the passage. My ma oh, sorry, I just need to clean this up a little bit. Uh, awkward, but okay, here we go. 38, 50. <laughs> what a what a speech, man! It was uh, it was a little hard to follow, but here's here's my map. Okay, I think my map should be better on this one uh, than than the previous couple ones. Uh, let's let's see how it goes. Here we go. Um, what's it called? I think the very first paragraph is. It's been said that the question of slavery is a political question and therefore women must not interfere it's not their business and that's just the very first half of the first par paragraph and the second half of the first paragraph goes uh yeah but is it political to care about suffering is it actually political and then there's like this big, long, beautiful list of problems that don't feel political, but I don't remember the list. I don't even remember a single detail from that list. I just remember the category of that list, okay? So this is not a, this is not an A plus map of the passage right now. Uh, on a better day, I would actually remember at least one detail. But there's a list of like issues that are supposed to be not political, but just moral, okay, ethical issues of justice, et cetera, okay? So it's a pretty long paragraph. I think by the end of that paragraph, it's, we're actually already in the middle of the, of the column. In the middle of the column, it says something about in the sphere of the home with our meekness and our domesticity and blah, 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 are we not also affected? 
Okay, so this is the this is where we begin to do a lot of rhetorical questions. And the general topic that I remember, at least in that second paragraph, is about how women are actually influenced by this in this fear. Now, at the third paragraph, which starts at the bottom of the left column, we start talking about and if. If there is to be a slave insurrection, the North is bound right now to oppress the slaves and to send them back to the South to continue their miserable lives. But will that, is that supposed to not affect us as women when all of our husbands and brothers and uh, sons go off to war? Are we supposed to just stay silent? And so more rhetorical questions. This continues in the top right. Uh, of uh, the second column, okay, the top right of the page. And then the final paragraph, it's a long one, it starts at the top of the right side. It starts top right, middle right. It begins with more hypothetical questions, and I don't remember what they're about right now. Something about the Declaration of Independence, I think, and something, uh, or maybe the Constitution. I don't remember, okay? It's, it's the middle of the right column, I don't fully remember, okay? But there's more hypothetical questions. And then afterwards, there's this final hypothetical question, which is something like, a rhetorical question, which is something like, must we stay silent or something like that? And then she answers her own, after like this huge buildup of rhetorical questions, she says, no, colon. And then after, after this part, this is like the crescendo of like a piece, you know, she, she starts thundering, like we must raise our voice and we will. Oh, I remember what the middle of the right column is about. It was about the political sphere. And if we say that the question, if we grant that the question of slavery is a political question, are we women not allowed to be political? Are we not allowed to think of the welfare of the nation? Okay, so up until then, I was saying that this was actually a pretty conservative argument. It was accepting the sphere of domesticity that the women were that women were destined to think about the home, and men were destined to think about the public life. Right? That was the sort of traditional conception of uh, the men, uh, the roles of men and women. And here, she, and and up until the middle of the right column, she actually hews to it. She she sticks to this idea that women are only supposed to care about the home, but she breaks it in the middle of the right column. And then the, in the final paragraph, she starts thundering. She's like a, she's a, she's definitely like a wolf in sheepskin, man, a wolf in sheepskin. She starts all meek. She starts looking like a sheep and then she fucking busts out the thunder. <laughs> it's such an epic speech. I, I wish I did. If I, if I didn't have the time limit, I would have orated it. I would have, I would have, I would have declaimed this speech because it's so exciting. It's such a, it's such a dope speech, guys. I don't know how to express my feelings about this speech, but it's such a dope speech. So, if I didn't have the time limit, I would have, I would have gone all, I would have gone all up on it. All right, that was my map of the passage. I would say it's not A plus because uh, it was still a little. No, but it's basically A minus. I think that was like an A minus map of the passage. I think it was a pretty solid map of the passage. Maybe A, maybe even an A. Uh, it was pretty solid. I, I'm missing some details. So my brain's a little fuzzy. So it could be A minus B plus map of the passage. How is your map of the passage compared to mine? Let me know in the comments below. I'm about to get right into the questions now. Here we go. Uh, all right. Three, two, one. Let's actually, I want to, before I do that, I want to see how long I took to read that passage. I took only five minutes, only five minutes to read that passage. Okay. Uh, I feel pretty good. Three, two, one, let's go. Smith's main purpose in the passage is to claim that women are allowed to talk about these things. Uh, yeah. That's a little bit different phrasing than I was expecting, but sure. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at just the beginning, the blurb again. To the okay, she's speaking to other women. Okay, and importance comes here. We cannot remain okay. Urgency and importance and justice, just and important. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna come back to this later. 
That's good enough. It's good enough. Uh, 39 at 40. Okay, that took me a little. That took me a little minute. With that, that took me 50 seconds. 50 seconds. Which statement provides the best description of a technique uses throughout R rhetorical questions? And mostly, in t yeah, no. Yeah, dude. Imagine all those early feminists in that room. They would have gone nuts. They would have gone ballistic, man. It would have been such a crazy speech. I can imagine how that speech went. Develop her argument about slavery as a political question over the course of the passage. At first, she assumes that it's not a political question. Then she says, then she accepts that it is. What the hell? Okay, maybe I'm misreading the question. How does develop her argument about slavery as a political question over the course of her? She claims that the designation of it as a political question is outdated. And the alternatives, no. She dismisses the designation as too narrow. Yes, yes. But then demonstrates its relevance. The relevance. What does the it refer to? Its relevance is slavery, the political question, not the designation, it's the actual relevant. I'm gonna go with this. I'm gonna come back to this. I feel really awkward about that. Okay, 4120. Um, keep going. Which choice best summarizes the first paragraph? First paragraph, uh, first paragraph, we're told Sorry, I'm a little distracted. I want to double check one of these other questions. Will it be easy to compare to? Okay, yeah. Uh, I'm just, I was double checking one of the questions. I'm, it's hard for me to explain without wasting too much time, so I'm gonna, I'll just move on, okay? Uh, there was this thing I was processing in my head. Uh, okay, first paragraph, first paragraph. First paragraph, summarizing the first paragraph. Um, It's a broad question, not a, explains the conventional, prevents evidence, nope, rejects a claim, and then reasons, it's kind of a wrong word, honestly, subject, background, problem, remedy, ooh, wow, what's, what's with all these word choices and these, and the answer choices, I'm not happy with any of these word choices here. Okay, argues that it is possible for women to engage in which activity in de debating political uh, in debating political, oh, humanist, sure, that works, uh, that works, personal, political, neutral, no, financial security is meeting, so, no, calls for, okay, this is in the left, middle left, um, so, basically 26 to 33, okay, 26 to 33, let me just double check over here, uh, yeah, 2633. Ooh, that's perfect. I feel a little sus because everything feels so weird right now, but yeah. 2633 may not uh, exist. Upright mind, in light and light. And must she be gentle because her heart. No. Gentle, less gentle while opposing. Yeah, there we go. I can double check this. Oh my god, I am. This is a struggle, yo. What the hell? I feel s the U.S. Constitution. U.S. Constitution requires which action on part of North Korea says uh, to suppress? Nope. Uh, would have to give shelter. Nope. Would have to help the slave states. Yep. No. Forty-four oh five. Main effect of the use tyrant, 40 and 83, 40 and 83, 40. Common cause with the tyrant, the south, where the slave holding south, 83. Uh, it's, it's condemning, you know, the main effect is it condemns, uh, not an individual, not from abroad, it condemns the 
Yeah, uh, specifically the slave, not the limiting rules. Yeah, of the of of the uh, of the slaveholding South specifically. Uh, Fifty-two slumbering most nearly means fifty-two slumbering. The uh, sleeping energies, the the uh, the the the, the uh, waiting, yeah, dormant. There we go. That's what I was looking for. Forty-four, fifty-five. Okay. Strongly suggest that slavery affects the United States by affecting everyone in it. I think is my roughly. Nah, I don't know about reputation. Disavow, no uh, violent conflicts, maybe uh, weakening the authority of the government. Ooh, I don't remember that. I don't remember that. But it has to be in the bottom right, is what I remember. Um, hang on, let me just make sure I re read the question correctly. Slavery affects the United States. How? How does slavery affect the United States? Crushing them to the earth, we're making us rendered a hissing and reproach throughout the world. This is, you know what? I kind of remember that. That's seventy. Ooh, that's not right. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And that is reputation. Okay, that one's a tough one because you have to just like that. That one you just have to remember that. Okay, forty-six minutes. Woo. <laughs> Painful. Uh, I have I have 19 minutes, so I could just go right back to that passage. But you know, you know what? I will. I will. I will. I will. Okay. Green is for when I redo. Just and important. Just and important. Just and important. Just and important. I mean, I think this is pretty obvious, right? It's dear to us. It's, yeah, it's. Accuse abolitionists. Nope. Continuations of. Nope. They're not. She dismisses designation as too narrow and then demonstrates its relevance. Okay, let's focus on relevance, okay? So the designation is too narrow, okay? While it involves immense importance to welfare and prosperity. Yeah, and this is demonstrating relevance. And this is demonstrating relevance. And this is demonstrating. The only thing that's awkward about this question is it's it's this question is phrased as if as if it's only talking see about about the whole passage, but it, it actually feels like the answer choice only covers the first two thirds of the passage. It's very strange. Um, best summarizes the first paragraph, rejects the claim, and elaborates on her reasons for. Okay. These whether these considerations are involved in the question of liberty or slavery. Okay, I guess that, that those are reasons. Those are reasons. Those are reasons. Those are reasons, and I eliminated all the other ones, right? Supporting it is wrong. So provides historical background. Yeah, yeah. So that's 58, 48, 15. Um, best evidence, 26, 33. Preserving the femininity, 42, 51, 77. 42, 51, 77. 42. Nope. 51. No. 77, no, because this whole thing is about, yes, it is, it is possible for them to do that, to act, yeah, okay, finally, we're at 40, oh, and I'm done, so that's 49 minutes, okay, 49 minutes, continuing with this passage, here we go. Passage one. Passage one. Handwork. Antibiotic found in dirt can kill drug resistant bacteria. Passage two. Same year. This antibiotic is cause for celebration and caution. And caution. Okay. 
So a more cautious perspective. Pathogens are acquiring resistance faster. This is the urgency causing a human health crisis. Kim Lewis, this is the importance. Okay, part of this team born from a new way to tap the powers of soil microorganisms. In animal tests, Texobactin, Texobactin uh, proved effective at killing off a wide variety, a wide variety of bacteria, even those that even those who have immunity. Best of all, mutant bacteria with resistance fail. That's good. It's very powerful uh, antibiotic. Could could function for decades. That's nice. Cool. We have something that can work for a couple decades. Now, okay, we're going into biological background. Why? How? How did this get developed? During the past century, okay, of most, but only one percent of these organisms can be grown in a lab. The rest have remained uncultured. So sure. So this is yeah the background. It's been tough to make this kind of stuff. Oh, so they, they, oh, they don't grow it in a lab. Okay, we allow them. Oh, no, no, we just grow them. We simply grow them in their natural environment. Cool. That's what we do. Okay, nutrients come through, but not the cells. Staph viruses, okay. Staph infections. Okay, this is mechanism. Brace on the walls by attacking, attacking the lipid molecules, okay. Many other antibodies attack proteins. The other ones attack proteins. which can mutate, okay? So this is why it's an advantage, okay? It's, it's different. Here we go, 52, 50, tough, tough passage. Antibiotic families, penicillin, come from soil, many come from soil fungi. And bacteria, and bacteria. New natural antibiotics. Kim Lewis, I think that's the same name. Okay, cool. Kim Lewis uh, found that they could isolate and grow, so which supply critical nutrients, critical mass. They can be transferred, and they're called simple and elegant. Okay, that's good. For opens a great way. It's a gateway, a wealth. It's a. It's, it opens the door. Is less exciting though. It's not bad, but it's not as exciting. Right, we talked about this before. It also killed tuberculosis. S. aureus is the staff and the mice. Okay, S. aureus has, this is mice that cause S. aureus. Okay, S. aureus. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just double checking. Tuberculosis? Did, did they even mention tuberculosis? I don't think they did in the first one. This is new. Real problem. So, three. 
one versus potential panacea, not a panacea. It doesn't kill gram negative opportunists, okay, gram negative, because the cell wall, okay, some, somehow gram negativity has something to do with cell walls. Manufacture is hard, okay. And thirdly, it's early. Tr oh, clinical trials, it'll take a while. It, yeah, clinical trials take a while. Five years and 500 million pounds. Bacteria evolve very swift and cheap. 55, 15. Stop. All right, here's my map of the passage. Here's my map of the passage. Oh, I'm a little tired, but I can do it. I'm all good. Here we go. Final passage, here we go. Map of the passage. Passage one. We made bacteria in dirt, or Kim somebody, KL made bacteria in dirt. It's called Taxobactum or something like that. Bruh, I forgot the first paragraph already. Uh, I forgot the first paragraph. Oh, God. Okay. But something like that. And then it talked about... Oh, my God. I forgot the first passage, guys. My map... This map is going to be no good. Um, and then and then it says something about how previous... back. And then at the end, it talks about how it's very different from the other ones. This is the top right where it talks about how it's very different from the other ones because it attacks the cell walls instead of the proteins because proteins can mutate. Uh, holy crap, I forgot that entire passage. What the heck? Passage one, the Kim, Kim L, KL, developed this taxobactin, take this TB, and uh, it, it, they, they uh, they, I don't, I forgot how they made it. They made it somehow. And then at the bottom, they got these mice and they had these staph infections and it was able to remove the staph infections. And it's effective because it attacks cell walls. But I, com I basically forgot the entire left column. Okay. I don't remember the left column. So this is probably my worst map today. Second column, second passage uh, starts at the top of the, top of the second column where it talks about Hey, uh, uh, many, many bacteria, uh, sorry, many antibiotics come from the dirt. And so it has been a scientist, you know, scientists have been thinking that it may be possible to develop new antibiotics from the dirt, something like that, okay? Just like general background. And then it tells about Kim Lawson and says, oh, uh, there's been this new discovery very recently where they where they have um, found something and it starts with high praise Amazing because they opened up a gateway for this whole area of research. Okay uh, Leroy, what's up? And then after that The next paragraph talks about but it's not so exciting. Oh But what they found which is takes I'm not so excited about is what the passage says then after that it says um, the good thing is that they've been able to take care of tuberculosis and staph infections and these mice and blah, blah, blah. It just summarizes some of the results from the previous paragraph. And it says that's really amazing because especially because tuberculosis is very, you know, resistant, uh, strain of, uh, virus or bacteria, I mean. So, okay. That's the middle of, that's the middle of the right column. Now we're getting towards the bottom of the right column and it says, um, and then it says, um, Bottom of the right column, and it says, what does it say? Uh, but the problem is that tazobactin is, um, it, there's three problems, okay? The first is that it only works on gram, ne uh, it, it only works on gram positive uh, bacteria. It doesn't work on gram negative ones because the cell walls are something too high or something like that, okay? The second one is that it's going to be expensive or something. I forget the second one. And then the third one is, well, uh, it's still very early, so it has to go through clinical trials, which is going to be super expensive, and it's going to take a long time, and um, our and bacteria evolve much faster than our clinical trials. We need something faster and cheaper. 
I forgot the second reason. Okay, but I basically remember I would give myself like a B plus uh, for the map of the passage for passage two. For passage one though, I would give myself like a D minus or like a F. <laughs> I wouldn't say it's an F though because I still remember the broad important parts, the most important parts. So I would give it like D minus or D, just like a D minus or D. Uh, but my map of the first passage is pretty pretty garbage. So that was my map of the passage. Uh, how was your map compared to mine? I'm about to get right into and finish off this fifth passage. Let's go. Here we go. I'm at 55, I'm at 55, 20 seconds, three, two, one, let's go. The first paragraph, primary serves two. Here we go. First paragraph is talking about path, urgency, urgency, urgency. Okay. Um, a problem that the research is gonna help address. Yes, that's correct. 55, 35. That took me 20 seconds. The author of passage one suggests that an advantage of the method Lewis's team used to grow micro an advantage, an advantage used to grow them. Okay, I don't remember this because my map of the passage is garbage. Uh, an advantage. Oh, because they use the natural because it makes it tricks them into and it's it's easier. It's it you know identifies the requirements for soil bacteria to thrive. Uh, that seems about correct. Let me come back to that. More? Nope. Nope. We're talking about growing because that's why it's nope. Uh, it makes you so bacteria that they've been previously. <laughs> Ooh, I don't know about replicate those features in artificial soil. I don't think it's artificial soil. I think it's D. Let me just double check because what happens is, uh, to do this, we actually had a soil sample. It's not artificial soil soil. Yeah. It's not artificial soil. See, but we could not previously exploit these guys, but only 1% of them can be grown in a lab. So instead of trying to figure out how to grow them in a lab, well, now we just allow them in the conditions they need. Okay, we're not replicating. Okay. Because these, yeah, now we're able to use them. Now we're able to use these other soil bacteria. Have remained uncultured. Exactly. Okay, that took me a while to get some confidence on. Uh, I needed some time to figure out the confidence, but all right, here we go. That is uh, 20, um, 20 to 21, 20 to 21, uh, 19 to 21 is the best part. Okay, 19 to 21 is the best part. There we go. Yep, 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 yep. That's perfect. F uh, 57, oh, wow. do I feel sketchy on that? I don't feel sketchy, but I, I don't know. So, uh, maybe I'm just like lacking confidence today. The author passes to would most likely agree with this statement about the development. The development is a very important thing. Um, a long-held belief about a potential source of new antibiotics. It is a long-held belief, right? So let me see. Man, long suspected that we could grow more types of bacteria, then we could find more. Cool. Yep, that's 58. That's exactly correct. That took me uh, 30 seconds. Caveats, 79. So what are my reservations? What are my reservations? You know, what are my concerns? Oh my God, why this misgivings? Ooh, ooh, who, did, did, you, did, did you guys know misgivings? Did you guys know misgivings? Uh, in the last sentence of passage two, the author uses the phrase five, primarily to emphasize how long and how expensive this, the scale of the effort needed to make the <laughs> consumer use is a little iffy, but the criticized level has committed. Nope, underscore the amount of time and money has, no. Spent developing with the amount spent developing on. Oh, nope. Okay. Consumer use was the only awkward part, but you know what? I just eliminated all the other ones. So moving on. Uh, and plus, it still makes sense. Consumer use. I just didn't think that was going to be the focus of the answer choice, but it still makes sense. The which choice best describes the relationship between passage one, passage two, passage one. Passage two is just more cautious about it and more frames it overall. Offers an evaluation of the significance of the research. That's correct. Not a modification, not examples, not dismissive. Okay, 59, 10. Uh, that took me how many? That took me 25 seconds. Is that 25 seconds? What is that? Okay, 25 seconds. He make the point that taxobactin could be useful. Taxobactin could be useful in, hang on, useful in treating. Not tuberculosis, but like d diseases, right? Or something, infections that are no longer responding to treatment with other antibiotics. Hang on. Th that's definitely what passage one is talking about. Let me just double check. 
So we need to talk about the positives here. Um, critical mass transfer cultivation, cultivation that never, never been grown before. Resistance, yes, resistance. There we go, that's exactly what I needed. I was looking for resistance. No longer responding to, there we go. Just double checking the other ones, but no, yep. This is the most obvious one. Here we go. That took me 45 seconds. Best supports which conclusion about the mice? The mice in experiment, experiment passage one. Passage two information, best supports which conclusion about the mice in passage one? Uh, that it was successful. Okay, passage two says, yeah, and it cured experimental infection in mice. So it was good. Not, we don't know about successful, it cured them. No? Pro what? Which conclusion about mice described in the experiment described in passage one? Uh, passage two supports that attack the gram positive, okay, enhance the effectiveness. Oh, let me figure out this gram positive bit. Maybe I wasn't understanding. That makes, killed the gram positive bacteria. That wording is very weird. It's like logically, it's like twisted. Uh, so I'm, I'm kind, of, I'm kind of come back to this because I just want to finish off the other ones. But very weird wording. Okay, I, I feel very uncomfortable with this. Exposure takes it back to make the molecules. Okay, now I have. I see this. It's a, it's a, it's a command of evidence question. So I need to double check. But here, let's uh, look at sixty. The one I'm going for right now is uh, 72 to 74. 72 to 74, okay. 70, oh, but we don't even have 72 to 74. That's insane. So this is gonna be something I need to work on, okay. It doesn't kill Gram-negative opportunists, as it's too big to com scale the complex cell wall. I think that's where the I think that's where the clue will be. It doesn't kill. Okay, it doesn't kill. So let's look at eighty. If, is that even an answer choice? It does. Okay. Their upper tract respiratory infections were likely not caused by. Oh, not caused by. Yes. Oh my God, that definitely is eighty to eighty-two. Okay, that took me a long time. That took me a long time. These two together took me almost three minutes. Okay, I'm good with this question though, so I just have to double check 17 to 20. 17 to 20, uh, previously unable to exploit, previously unable to exploit, 17 to 20, have been grown in the lab. We're talking about these bacteria a soil bacteria, 99% of soil bacteria were previously unable to be exploited. These organisms, that's referring to soil bacteria and fungi. Okay, that is totally correct. So I'm solid, I'm solid on 63.30 right now for this passage. Now I'm gonna use my extra time, extra time, I have one minute and 30 seconds to just double check the first three passages. The fourth and fifth passages I've already just double checked. So I'm just gonna double check the first three passages. Here we go, ba 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 ba. We're good. Just looking for those circles, looking for those circles. Based on the information in the passage, which would be a transactive memory source, transactive memory source. Uh, factual information, not a souvenir. No, I'm good with this, I'm good with this. I'm good with this, 55. Here we go, one more minute. One more minute, one more minute. Oh, I'm, and I'm good. I've already double checked all these. So I'm good, 6415, my friends, stop. Whew, whew. Guys, I'm about to score myself, I'm pretty excited. I want 52 out of 52, three days in a row. 52 out of 52, three days in a row, can I do it? I need to breathe, I'm like, I'm not getting nervous now, because the longer the streak goes, the more intense it gets, right? 
because uh, if I'm just a bumbling F up, then it doesn't really matter. <laughs> All right, let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. By the way, I have never seen any of these passages before. I've never seen them, okay? Uh, Didn't I put the answers up somewhere? Okay, I need to pull them up again. Uh, this is SAT practice test number nine, so give me a second. Show in enclosing folder, and here are, here it is. All right, guys, I'm about to score. Uh, and hey, Mexico, what's up? Uh, which question were you referring to? Which number? Were you talking about the last two, like uh, 50, 51 and 52? That, me that messed me up for a bit. But that's actually a pretty clean inference question. That's like a great inference question. Uh, I'm looking for, where's my, where's the answers, bro? Oh, here. Okay, okay, got it. <laughs> so intense. Okay. Today, I, I don't know, not a lot of people watched the entire stream, but if you guys saw my stream, man, my maps were garbage. Uh, I had real bad maps today. Uh, but I still feel like I could get a 51 or 52 out of 52. <laughs> Let's see if I regret saying those numbers now. Let's see what happens. Here we go. Uh, I chose DB. DB are correct. I chose BACA. BACA -A are correct. Seven. I chose CCCC are correct. BC. BC are correct. I got 10 for 10 in nine minutes and 20 seconds that's pretty solid uh very fast actually uh 11 to 12 i chose dd dd are correct then i chose uh dbb dbb are correct and then caa are correct and then cd are correct i got 10 for 10. this one took me uh, about 12 minutes though so but that's good you know uh like, if you can do 10, 12, 13, okay, if you can do 10, 12, 13 for the first three passages, then you would be at 35 minutes, okay? If you do 10, 12, 13 and you're at 35 minutes, uh, that means you have 30 minutes left for the remaining two passages, right? Uh, so it's not so bad. Um, 10, 12, 13. I I'm trying to figure out, like, yeah, what the cleanest numbers to explain are. And I think 10, 10 12, like, basically 35 minutes for the first three passages and then 30 minutes for the next two passages, I think that's actually a pretty good split, uh, at least for me. Uh, I'm kind of curious, you know, if, if, any, if any of you guys have also been really like doing exactly what I do, you like time every single question, every single passage, uh, if you've been doing that, I'm curious what your split is like. Because the more I do this, the more I realize that like uh, 35 for three passages and 30 for two passages is like, it feels like a pretty clean split for most passages, for most tests. Anyway, I'm going on, uh, 21. I'm not trying to procrastinate. I just had this random thought that that occurred to me that I felt very important. A, B, D, A, C. A, B, D, A, C. What number was this? 21. A, B, D, A, C. Oh, God. I thought I made a mistake. A, B, D, A, C is correct. And then I chose B, A, D. B, A, D are correct. And then, come on. D, C, B. D, C, B are correct. All right. I'm 11 for 11. All right. We're getting towards it. We're, I'm at 31 for 31. Here we go. <laughs> Okay, D-A-B, D-A-B, D-A-B. No! What? Oh, no, 32, right? Oh, okay, good. D-A-B are correct. B-A-A -A are correct. C-D-C -C are correct. 41. A-D. Oh, no, A-C. 41, okay, A-C. 41, 42 are A-C. Good, correct. 40, so is that... Is that 11 for 11? That is 11 for 11. Ah, uh, yo, it feels good, guys. 43 to 45 are, uh, I chose CDA. CDA are correct. Then I chose, hang on, what did I choose? <laughs> Jeez. I mean, I, I chose D, but I just didn't circle it. Guys, this counts, right? <laughs> this counts, right? Uh, so, because D, C, A, my friends, are correct. DCA are correct. Long held belief about put yeah, I did choose that. Now, obviously, if you don't bubble it on the real bubble sheet, it would not count. Uh, but please, just you know, make this count. 
because I was just getting a little tired by the end. And I chose B here, I assume. Combating infections are no longer responding to treatment with other combating infections. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. That is what I chose. Okay, so let me just double check this because I, I just got thrown off a little bit. CDA, let's go back to CDA on 43, 43. CDA are correct. And then I chose DCA. DCA are correct. Cool. And then over here, I chose A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D are correct. Hell yeah. 10, oops. 10 for 10, 52 for 52, mofos, three days in a row. Plus I got this new mic, this dope new mic. So I think my voice, uh, my, the mellifil, the mellif <laughs> I'm, I'm mumbling over my own words. The mellifluous harmonies of my voice are coming through nice and clean, right guys? All right, so that's 52 for 52. Uh, I see no questions about this pa these passages, so that's it for the stream today, guys. Uh, I gotta go pretty, s I gotta go like now, actually. Uh, I, I have to leave at seven. But guys, uh, thanks for joining the stream. And uh, if I can just give a couple tips uh, just, you know, as like a reminder of like what my approach is, okay? If you've, if you've been watching this at all, uh, you kind of, uh, if you've been watching my streams at all, you kind of know what my tips are, but I'm going to just do a quick summary. All right. My approach is it's a reading test. So improve the freaking reading, like learn to read better. Okay. For each genre of reading, there are different conventions for fiction. You should learn conflict resolution, character setting. Okay. For science, you should learn hypothesis, experiment design, results, discussion, also background, okay? For history, or specifically speech and debate in the his in historical context, right? For speech and debate, you should learn uh, uh, claims, reasons, evidence. You should learn uh, credibility and ethos, how you build that up. Uh, you should learn rebuttals ref uh, and rebuttals and concessions, okay? Those are basic ingredients. And you should know the genre conventions and you should read them. And once you read them, you should have a decent map of the passage in your head. That basically you kind of remember where the ideas came out on what part of the page. Was it top left, bottom left, top right, bottom right? You should do this in, oftentimes it'll take you more than five minutes just to read the passage if you do it. Okay, instead of like breathlessly rushing through the passage, just like barely understanding anything. No, you should actually understand it and you should basically remember what the passage says. Then after that, smooth sailing. You read the questions, the question stems, you predict the answers because you remember the freaking thing, right? You use your map of the passage to predict the questions before you go right into the answer choices, then you choose the answer choice that's closest to your prediction. Easier said than done, but when you do it, when you shift your, when you shift your strategy, you can start solving these questions the way that I solve them. Yes, it's scary at first. It's like, oh, but please solve. I'm just a, I'm just a teeny weeny wussy, uh, like wussy reader. I'm scared that I won't understand anything. Yeah, but how are you gonna ever learn to read if you stop, if you keep rushing the reading in three minutes? Like, are you ever gonna get any better at reading? Like, when are you, like you're getting better at math, you're getting better at grammar. When are you gonna start getting better at reading? Freaking read. Give it the full six minutes, sometimes, sometimes even seven minutes when it's like really hard, right? Give it some time, learn to read, right? Just like how you're gonna, at first when you're, when you're learning algebra or trigonometry, it might take you a couple minutes to like process how to like make those calculations. At first it's gonna be slow. That's fine for math, that's fine for grammar, why is it not fine for reading? Learn to read, <laughs> okay? So that's my whole approach. Uh, so I want to do a quick summary for anybody who's uh, dropping in after the May SAT and is, and is preparing for the June SAT. By the way, guys, if you are curious, I am not taking the June SAT uh, because I'm not allowed to. Uh, as an adult, I'm not allowed to take the June SAT. So uh, good luck to everyone who's studying for the June SATs. I will be streaming, uh, I will be streaming, I have like six or seven more like uh, tests I'll be streaming for the rest of this month. So uh, I'll be joining along for the ride. And uh, if you guys are active with the comments, with the chat, in the Discord, whatnot, you know, I'll be uh, trying to make myself as helpful as possible. Guys, the most important thing is not to worry so much about the numbers day to day. Uh, you should be paying attention to numbers generally just to understand your progress, but 
focus more on growing. What can you do today to change your reading habits, to change your test taking habits, to change your, uh, your, uh, your reasoning habits? What can you do today to be a better, smarter, more intelligent person? Keep on growing. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.